Hi everybody, Dr. Kerrigan here with a quick review on matrix multiplication. As you saw in the videos, the matrices follow a bunch of properties when it comes to um, adding and also multiplying. And, and we wanna be careful to use the properties correctly as matrices don't follow the same rules as regular you know, rational numbers do. There's some differences we wanna talk about. So first of all, when it comes to adding, I think you'll see that there's a lot of commonalities with uh, with regular, you know, rational or natural numbers. We have A plus B equals B plus A, meaning matrix addition is commutative. Uh, matrix addition is also associative. You can choose to group the addition in, in any way and still arrive at the same answer. If you take a matrix A and add a zero matrix, you end up getting the same matrix back out. So that, um, you know, that's a nice property um, or, or additive identity, if you will, it preserves the matrix. You can also distribute a scalar across a sum without issue um, in either direction. So we can do R to A, then R to B, or we can do R to A and then S to A, like two different scalars instead of two different matrices. And the order you multiply scalars by, that doesn't matter. And as a reminder, scalars are just single numbers like 2 or 419 or 68 or whatever number you, you choose. So um, I could do r times s first then go to a or i can um i said that backwards i could do um i can multiply matrix a by s get that result then multiply by r or i can multiply the scalars first then multiply by matrix a it doesn't matter in terms of matrix multiplication um when we multiply two matrices together we need to make sure that the number of columns of the first matrix matches the number of rows in the second matrix so whenever you're going to do that, it's best to write out the dimensions of the first matrix, in this case it's A, and the dimensions of the second matrix, in this case it's B. If the number of columns in the first matches rows in the second, that's when you know the multiplication is allowed. If they don't match, then you cannot multiply the matrices. So with numbers, we can multiply whatever we want, but with matrices, multiplication isn't always defined. So we wanna be careful with that. And when we do multiply those, the resulting size of the matrix is M by P. It's the number of rows in the first matrix by the number of columns in the second matrix. So that's this result here. And the columns are all matrix vector products, as we saw in the previous sections with linear combinations. So we can say each column of the resulting product matrix is a linear combination of the columns of A using the weights from the corresponding column of B. There's a really cool jingle on YouTube. It, it's it, a bunch of kids sing it. You can look up a row by column matrix song. It, it's really cool. It's very catchy. It goes row by column, row by column. But when we multiply two matrices together, it's exactly that. We're multiplying the row of the first matrix by the co corresponding column of the second matrix. And when we find all those products, we then just add them up. That's what this expression says here. And that gives us the, the corresponding entry in the answer matrix. So if I took row two from the first matrix and column three from the second matrix, that result would be row, uh, that that result would then be second row, third column of the resulting answer matrix. Similar for multiplication, we have a set of properties for matrix multiplication, not just scalar multiplication, but matrix multiplication. And we wanna be really careful to understand that um, you know, associativity still holds, notice A, B, C, A, B, C, but the order we group them in, you know, you know, the priority order doesn't seem to matter. But notice both times though, it says A, B, C, A, B, C. It never says A, C, B, or, or C, B, A. Um, we still have to follow the same order left to right, but we can choose what we prioritize first. Um, distributive laws, notice if matrix A is on the left, then we have to distribute that way as well. However, if A is on the right, Unlike, you know, maybe in an algebra class where your teacher might have tricked you up and said, you know, multiply these together and you'd have no problem saying 4x plus 8. Um, with matrices, we don't have the luxury of putting the 4 in front of the x. Um, if we're using right distribution, this would have to be b times a and not a times b. So you want to be really careful about that. The order absolutely matters. Um, with scalars, again, you can weave scalars in and out you know, whenever you want to apply those to the matrix. But again, notice it's A then B, it's A then B, it's A then B. 
um, you know, the scalar can go first, second, or third, but um, but the matrix order must stay the same. And then identity matrix, this is, is the equivalent of multiplying a, a real number by one. When you multiply a real number by one, you don't change a number. For matrices, if you multiply it by, you know, this would be the two by two identity matrix. This would be the three by three identity matrix. Um, it's basically a matrix containing zeros and ones where one is the diagonal entry. You know, it'd be row one, column one, row two, column two, row three, column three, et cetera. Um, multiplying by this special matrix on either the left or the right results in the same matrix as you started. Transposing a matrix, transpose means that um, rows become columns. So if I say, for example, this matrix, one, two, three, four, if I want to transpose it, one, two becomes a column, and then three, four becomes a column as well. Um, we, we're going to be using transposes a lot once we get to determinants, and then again with subspaces and um, diagonalizing, so it's not really going to go away. There's a couple of cool properties with transposes. If you transpose a transpose, you're back at the start, like you're kind of undoing what you did in the first place. If you're adding two matrices, then transposing the result, that's the same thing as um, transposing each individual matrix and then adding that up. For any scalar R, um, you know, scalars can't really get transposed. They're just single numbers. So there's really no such thing as like R, you know, transpose. So we don't even really write that. We just take it out and just transpose A. So don't um, do that. And then last, this is important. And we're going to see on the next slide with inverses. If you transpose a product, um, the order switches. So if I transpose AB, it comes out as B transpose A transpose. If I transpose ABC, it would be C transpose, B transpose, A transpose. You always reverse the order when it comes to transposes. We're going to work through a couple of examples together just to get used to, um, you know, multiplying matrices out. So the first, you know, here's just a set of a bunch of different matrices. We have a, a two by two here. Might help to write the dimensions out. A two by two here, a two by three, a two by one. We're used to seeing those when, when we were augmenting columns on um, a three by one. And then this guy over here is a one by two. It's just a, a row um, with two columns. So for the first part, I want to do matrix A times matrix C times X. Matrix A is two by two. Matrix C is two by three. And then X is uh, two by one. So... If I look at that, I could do A by C. That's a legal, that is a legal multiplication, not illegal. That is a legal multiplication because the number of columns in A matches rows in C. So if I did multiply those together, I would get out a two by three matrix. But my concern is with X, X is two by one. So this multiplication is not going to work. These numbers are not the same. So this is something that is not defined. So it's good just to do a little check before you start doing stuff. If like if I would have multiplied A by C, I would have just wasted a lot of time because I wouldn't have been able to take that result and multiply it by X. So this is not something we can do. Um, for C times B transpose, um, so for matrix C, if it starts out as a two by three, um, sorry, matrix C is two by three, right? So then B transpose, it starts out as a two by two. And um, if I transpose it, it's still two by two. So that's not really going to work either. These inner dimensions don't match. So this would be not defined as well. Okay, so now for A times Z transpose, notice A is a two by two matrix. Z it starts out as a one by two. But like I said, when we transpose, we switch rows and columns. So um, I would also switch the dimensions. Z transpose would be two by one. So finally, we do have a multiplication that is allowed. So we will take matrix A and um, matrix Z transpose. So again, transpose means that the row seven negative one now becomes a column seven negative one. If I multiply that out, um, and again, my answer should be a two by one matrix since these two are the same. 
the dimensions are the outer ones. So I'm going to have two rows, one column. So my first entry would be row one by this column. Seven times one is seven. Negative two times negative one is two. Seven plus two is nine. Then for the second entry, seven times three is 21. Four times negative one is negative four. 21 minus four is 17. So that is defined. And that's our answer. Last, um, c squared. So c squared, what you don't want to do is square each entry in matrix C. That is not the correct thing to do. Just like when we don't, um, you know, like back in algebra, when, when you were told that this is not equal to x squared plus 81, um, that, that's the same mistake you don't want to make here. You don't want to square the entries in C to get, you know, 9... 64, 1, 4, 0, 16. Instead, we want to see if multiplying C by itself will give us the answer. Now, if I multiply C by itself, it's a 2 by 3 by a 2 by 3. These numbers don't match each other. You can't square um, C. It's not going to work. So this would be not defined as well. Most products are defined. Um, I just happened to pick out a bunch of ones that were, were not just to show you um, you know, that, that these all can have different faces, you know, there's not a type that doesn't work, um, you know, not to find can show up with transposes, with squares, with three, you know, matrices multiplied together, really just about anywhere. All right, next I want to talk about um, rotation matrices. These get used in matrix multiplication a lot, and it's one of my favorite applications of um, matrix multiplication. Hopefully, if you like this course, there's a, a course later on uh, college geometry, if you take some more uh, math beyond this, that, that goes into more detail with um, geometric actions and different types of geometry. So this could be like a little um, sneak peek. But um, but there's this thing called a rotation matrix that um, has this setup. And if you supply the theta or, or the angle of rotation, you will get out a matrix with um, numbers in it that you can use to, you know, rotate or, or reflect different points in the plane, you know, represented by vectors. So we're going to let A be the 180 degree rotation matrix. So if you thought you saw the last of pre-calc, you have not. So we need to um, evaluate all of these using the unit circle. And, um, you know, this would be at the point negative uh, 1, comma, 0. And we know that x goes with um, with cosine and y goes with sine. So I'm going to have two negative ones there. And then sine is the y value. So those are going to those are going to be zeros for me. And um, and the question asks us to let b be the matrix that reflects R2 about the x-axis. So that means if, if I multiply any point x, y by b on the left, that just would give me, um, you know, if I did row by column, this would give me out x, and then this would give me out negative y. So it has the effect of taking a point that, say, is in a quadrant 1, and when I multiply it by b on the left, now I get x negative y. So it's in the same spot, you know, along the x-axis, but it just reverts, um, you know, over the x-axis to, to the negative part of, of the y. So that's the, the action. It asks us to compute B, A. So now I'm going to take matrix B and matrix A that I just determined. And um, that is a valid multiplication because I have two 2 by 2 matrices. The inners match. Great. So then the answer is the, the size of the answer are the outer dimensions. So I will do uh, row by column. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Then I have the zeros, so that's um, out. Then I do row 1, column 2. That's going to be row 1, column 2 over here. That gives me out um, 0 and 0. So that's a 0. Uh, row 2, column 1. That's going to give me a 0 here and a 0 here. And then last, uh, 0 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. That's my product. So if you'll notice, 
um, the question says, uh, geometrically, what happens if I take a point and I multiply it um, by this answer matrix here? So let's just take our x, y from before. If I multiply our answer matrix by x, y, I get out uh, negative x plus 0, and then this stays out as y. So my, my vector would go from x, y over here to negative x, y, which would be over here. So this is a matrix that would give us a reflection over the y-axis. And like I said, you could supply any theta you want, and it will rotate these, uh, these vectors by any angle you choose, which will become important later on when we talk about um, rotating conic sections in the plane. So again, this is called rotation matrices, and if you like this kind of stuff, look into taking college geometry later on. And last, so earlier I mentioned algebra. Um, so I'm sure many of you in, in high school at some point were taught the, the F word FOIL, that if you have something like x plus 3 squared, that that's equal to um, x plus 3 times x plus 3 and that we do first outer inner last. So we get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9, and then we just add up the two middle terms, which would give us x squared plus 6x plus 9. So at first glance, it seems like this looks pretty good. It looks true, looks like something that might work. However, it doesn't. And the reason is because matrix multiplication, as I mentioned earlier, follows a very set order. If I'm going to write this out twice, when I do first, that's A times A. So sure, yes, there is an A squared. When I do outer, that's A times B. But when I do inner, that's B times A. And when it comes to matrices, we cannot assume that these can be combined. A, B, and B, A are very often different things, unless they're inverses, which we'll talk about another time. These are usually different things altogether. So all we can do is really stop here. We cannot combine these two middle terms. So this is not a valid equation. And I, I just bring this up to, to reinforce the idea that over these six slides, we did look at some properties and some ideas that worked with uh, real numbers, but don't carry over to, um, to matrices. Matrix multiplication breaks all the rules and, and has its own rules. So you want to be careful with that. All right, so that's all I got. Good luck on your homework assignment.